In this video, I'll demonstrate using a simple coin tossing example, a Bayesian approach to hypothesis testing that avoids the problems and ambiguities of the classical p-value null hypothesis approach. The hypothesis that we're going to test is whether a coin is biased, and we're going to do this by tossing it many times and counting the number of times it comes up heads. The Bayesian approach recognizes that there is always some uncertainty about the true probability of heads. And in contrast to classical approaches, in this Bayesian approach, we're going to learn about this uncertainty. In fact, what we're going to learn is the distribution for the probability of tossing a head. And what we have to do is start with some prior probability distribution for the probability of heads. And the normal way we're going to do this is to choose a uniform distribution, uniform from 0 to 1, meaning that it could be any probability between 0 and 1 is equally likely. So here you can see the uniform distribution displayed. The number of heads that you get in n tosses of a coin is clearly dependent on the number of tosses and the probability of heads. So let's see how we define that. And you can see it's defined as a binomial distribution where n is the number of tosses and p is the probability of tossing a head. Whether or not we believe the hypothesis that the coin is biased is true depends totally on what we learn about this probability of heads and whether it goes above some threshold. And so that's why we've defined this node, p greater than threshold, in this way. If it's above the threshold, then it's true, otherwise it's false. So now let's suppose that we toss the coin 100 times and that we observe 55 heads. So we're going to enter the observation 100 for the number of tosses and we're going to enter the observation 55 for number of heads observed. And what we're going to do now is run the model. And let's see what we've learned about the probability of heads. You can see we've learned it's that distribution. It's got a mean of about 0.55, which is what you'd expect. But is this greater than the threshold? Well, we haven't set a threshold yet. So what we want to do is set a threshold here. Let's suppose that the threshold we're going to set is just above 0.5. Then when we run the model, you can now see that the probability that P is greater than that threshold is just under 84%. In contrast to classical hypothesis testing, we've learned something directly about the probability of the biased coin hypothesis. We've learned that there's an 84% chance that the probability of a head is greater than a half. Let's see what happens now when we observe more than 55 heads in 100 tosses of a coin. Let's suppose we observe 62 heads. And we run the model again this time. The probability distribution of the heads has shifted and the probability that P is greater than the threshold is now over 99%. So there's a greater than 99% chance that this coin is genuinely biased, that its probability of a head is greater than a half. What we're going to do now is compare this with the classical approach to hypothesis testing. So we're going to set everything back to what it was before. So in the classical approach, we actually assume the null hypothesis of a fair coin, meaning that the probability of heads is 0.5. And in this case, what we're going to do is look at the probability of observing particular evidence given that null hypothesis. As we hover over the graph, we can see that the probability of getting a 62 is 0 0.0044, so that's less than half a percent. Or we can actually display the statistics and see the same thing. And that probability of 0 0.0044 is the p-value associated with the classical statistical null hypothesis testing. But it tells us nothing directly about the probability of the null hypothesis being true or not.